Let's do two examples of exponential growth and decay uh, using the perspective of calculus, but not really using it very much. Um, we start out, our differential equation is the most important differential equation in the world, bar none. dy dt is ky, a function whose derivative is proportional to itself. Or in other words, the, gr the proportional growth rate, dy dt divided by y, is a constant k. Well, in other videos, I've talked about how the general solution is basically just an exponential function. It's e to the kt, so this k shows up in here. And then we need an arbitrary constant. Well, it turns out to come in multiplicatively. It's any multiple of e to the kt. And that constant comes in mathematically, but the other thing we need to remember is it has a meaning. It actually has a very simple meaning. The meaning of c is simply that c is y of 0, because if you plug in, 0, this becomes e to the 0 is 1, and c is just the initial value. Okay, So uh, c is equal to y of 0 equals the initial value of y. Now that's initial at y at time t equals 0. You might be given something different, and that's exactly one of the examples we're going to do. Okay, so here's a just barely changed version of a book problem. I don't want to do an even problem necessarily for everybody, but um, we've got bacteria growing in a dish, okay, and we know that, uh, let's see, I'll say it verbally, at uh, after two hours, after the start of when we started the clock, there are, let's say, 500 bacteria, whoops, and after eight hours, There are 32,000 bacteria, I guess I'll say. Eh, not happy. Okay. Okay. And so, various questions we can ask. How many bacteria are there to start with at zero hours? How many are there at an arbitrary hours? When does the number of bacteria get to various things? So let's ask a few of those in turn. Um, the first thing I would ask, it's not exactly how the book says it, is what is the general formula for the number of bacteria, let's call it y of t, as a function of time. Okay. So this is something where we go to our general solution. You don't have to solve this differential equation. It's already solved. Don't go back to here unless it's really appropriate, but I'll show you a place where it is appropriate in a minute. And so we just have y of t equals c e to the kt, and we'll see if we can plug that in. We need to know c and k. Those are our parameters. This is a general model with undetermined parameters, numbers that we're going to be able to know in a specific situation like c and k. Okay. Now, if they had given us after zero hours there are a certain number of bacteria, we could just use this interpretation of c, the meaning of c to put in c, but we don't quite know that. But we can put in is that 500, well, that's y of 2, and that's c e to the 2k. And, whoops, 32,000, that's y of 8, that's c e to the 8k. Ooh, so we've got two equations and two unknowns. 500 is c e to the 2k, 32,000 is c e to the 8k. A little tricky, maybe, not what we're used to, but there's a very simple trick to do this. You always want to think about some algebraic operation to play these off against each other. Subtraction won't work. You can try it, subtracting one equation from the other. But growth, proportional growth rate, that's all about ratios. And if you remember anything about exponentials, you might have been taught it's all about ratios and growth ratios. Oh, maybe we should divide. Indeed, 32,000 over 500. That's going to be c e to the 8k over c e to the 2k. Aha, and the c's cancel. And we can use rules, rules of exponents, that's e to the 6k, and so we're good. Okay, so now this is 64. Oh, sorry, equals. Okay, so uh, now we can strip off the e by using an ln. That's what lns are for. And so k is going to be ln 64 divided by 6. Okay, now let's get that numerically. It's going to be some kind of random value. Okay, so that's 0 0.69315. Hmm. It's actually not a random value, but you might not recognize that. You're probably not going to. 
Okay, so now we can plug that back into our equation. Y of t equals c. Ooh, we don't know c yet. 0.69315 t. Okay, but we can figure out c because we can go back into one of these equations. Okay, so we can go further. We can really figure out c. Let's just plug it back into here. 500 equals c times e to the 2k. 2 times 0.69315. Okay, and so I'm just going to solve for that. C is 500 divided by E to the uh, 2 times. You could, you could do this calculation the 2 times if you want, but let's just have the computer do it all to, for me. I'm going to notice something, hopefully. Oh, that's interesting. That's a suspiciously simple number. Okay. Now, this is a contrived example, and let me show you something in a minute. But let's, let's go ahead and finish this sequence here. Every time you get a, a value for one of these parameters, you go back and recycle to your general model and plug it in. Aha, now I've got 125e to the 0.69315t. That is a completely explicit function, and we can use that to answer lots of other questions. So, in particular, we could say, B, what is the initial amount? Somebody forgot to write down how many bacteria there were initially. Oh, okay, but that's just Y of zero, which is always equal to C for this model, and that happens to be the simple number 125. Why is it a simple number? As I say, that's not usually going to be simple. This is a contrived example, but I'm imitating a book example that's similarly contrived. Okay, so here's why it's, uh, why it's contrived, the, or why it's a simple number. From two hours to eight hours, we could think of that as three six-hour blocks. Let me uh, let me insert a little table here. Uh, two rows, bunch of columns. Okay, so let's say this is t, and this is y. So I like to know at zero. Let's say I haven't done the calculation yet, and see if we can do it another way. This is two. This is uh, five hundred. Okay, and then it, I'm going to put in 4 and 6 in between 8, even though nobody asked us about it. And then at 8, it's up to 32,000. So the key is this idea of a growth factor, okay? So for exponential growth, so this is, I have to say, this is a strategy for doing something and understanding something that's not absolutely crucially necessary. Once we've got this model, we can answer everything, and we're going to use this for everything. But I wanted to explain why this ends up being a simple number. And it does give you good intuition about what exponential growth means. Every two years, we get the same growth factor. The bacteria multiply by the same amount. That's how exponential growth works. When you add onto an, an exponent, you end up multiplying uh, the exponential. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details of that because um, that's I've talked about that in other videos. Every two years, we get the same growth factor. Let's just call it R. Okay. Well, then from, two, from 500 to 32,000, or from t go from 2 to 8, that's three growth factors. So I'm going to multiply by r to get this mystery, r to get this mystery, r to get this mystery. In other words, um, I need that r cubed times 500 equals 32,000. Or r cubed is the ratio. It's all about ratios with exponentials. And that is a simple number. It turns out to be 64. I picked it to be simple so that this would work. In general, this is not going to be a particularly nice number, but this kind of analysis would still work. It's just that r isn't going to be nice and not simple. In this case, I picked that to be a cube, so r is 4. It's the cube root of 64. Aha, so now we can instantly plug these in. This is 2,000. Oops, let me put it in math mode so it doesn't look weird. Then it's going to grow up by another 4, 8,000, and then another 4. Yep, that gets me to 32,000. That works. To go back in time, what do we do? Instead of multiplying by 4, I divide by 4, and 500 over 4 is 125. Okay, So that's why this would, I could contrive this in a nice way to produce this simple number. OK, so now what's another question we could ask? It might be, um, find how many bacteria after, let's say, um, 7 hours. Okay, well that's just y of 7. That's the simplest question you can possibly be asked here. It's e to the 0.69315 times 7. 
Oh, I should demonstrate another way, and this is contrived real quick. Um, when I said that this number wasn't random, if you take e to the 0.69315, that's actually a very, very famous important number because if you take e to that number, you just get 2. It's the ln2. So really, this is just ln2 that showed up here. And if we did a little uh, work with lns here, ln64 over 6, it's not hard to show using properties of logs. That's just really ln2. But let's not worry about that. Let's just keep it as the decimal. Okay. It's supposed to be an applied problem anyway. Okay. Well, I shouldn't have erased that. E equals 2. Okay. So back to here. Okay. So we're just going to take that times 7. We're just going to plug it in. That's easy numerically. Ah, surprise, surprise. It's a simple number 16,000. That's because this guy not only. Every two years, you get a growth factor of four. Every one year, you get a growth factor of two. Okay, so that happened to be simple. Okay, um, again, kind of contrived, but I'm imitating a book problem. It's almost as contrived. Now, here's an interesting one. Here's where the calculus actually comes in. What is the rate of growth after seven hours? Okay, rate of growth. Now they don't say proportional rate of growth. They say rate of growth. That's rate of change. That's y prime. Or dy dt. Aha, okay. So we could take this function and just differentiate it, but there's an easier way to do it. Remember, dy dt for this kind of model is just ky, and we know what k is. And we also know what y is. We just figured out y, okay. So that's ky. So y prime at 7 hours is just k, which is ln2, or 0.69315, times the number we just figured out. So that's a nice way to do that. If you know the number of bacteria and you know the magic K factor, you just multiply them together and you get, okay, 1109. Oh, okay. So let's see. That's predicting every hour we get 11,000 more bacteria. Well, that's reasonable because by hour eight, we are definitely, we're up by 16,000. And so that makes, it's, it's the right ballpark. Okay. So that's a good thing to know. Okay. One more question we could ask, and then we'll end the video. What about when will the number of bacteria reach, let's say, 50,000? Okay. Now, instead of plugging in t and getting y, I'm going to plug in y into my model. 50,000 equals 125e to the 0.69315t. Okay, and I'm just going to solve for t. Okay, so 50,000 over 125 equals that. Okay, and so let's just go ahead and calculate that. You could probably do that without the calculator, but okay, it's 400. Just use the calculator. Okay, so then I'm going to take an ln of that. Okay, and then I'm just going to divide. T is going to be ln 400 over, well, it's ln 2, really. Let me write that down. It's easier anyway. Okay. And we'll comp compute that numerically. Okay, does that make sense? You always want to ask yourself, does that make sense? Well, it's a bit past 8 hours. We know that at 8 hours, let's look at our table again. We know that at 8 hours, we're at 32,000. At 10 hours, you might want to think about what you're going to get up to. If this factor is four, and eight nine hours, in fact, we figured out that basically every hour it doubles. Um, it's just an hourly doubling time. So at nine hours, it'll be sixty-four thousand. So to fifty thousand, it's less than nine. It's between eight and nine. So it does make sense. So you can all often use this kind of tabular uh, data to get a, a rough ballpark estimate, and that's really helpful for for finding errors when you do this. Okay.